<laughs> They're all going to take a seat. <laughs> all right. All y'all going to sit down. Everybody out. ready? Listen, I need y'all to pay attention, okay? Are we good? Are we on the same page? Okay, we're good. We're good on my side. You ready? Oh, we, we stay okay. ready. Ain't got to get ready. Oh, but not with that, all that stuttering. Okay. <laughs> So, all right, y'all ready? Here we go. Turn the music down just a little bit, because I need... Y'all pay attention. Y'all, y'all. All right, y'all ready? Listen, y'all be focused. Right. If he don't say Simon Says, y'all don't do it. Cool. All right. Ha <laughs> ha, we have a strategy. All right, y'all ready? I guess I'll go first, because Monty is still talking to Liam real quick. So, Javi, you on my side? I'm gonna need you to be here tonight, okay? Because sometimes you be. Hey, okay, yes, yeah, so I need you to be. May. Yeah, yeah. Beat, okay, good. Beat good. past the hobby again. All right, y'all ready? Two weeks in a row. Simon says, put your hands on your head. Simon says, put your hands on your knees. Simon, Simon says, put your hands in the air. Uh huh. Sit down. Simon says, close your eyes. Open your eyes. I, de I definitely can't see that. That was, that was, that was really bad. <laughs> All right. Simon says, put your hands down. Simon says, put your hands up. Simon says, put your hands down. Put your hands up. Boom. I see one right there. Yes, I seen you. Have a seat, ma'am. My turn now. Let's go. Woo. My turn now. Come on. Oh. Come through. Come through. Oh. No, it's my turn. Get out of here. Simon, Get out of here. Simon says, open your eyes back up. My bad. I'm sorry about that. Y'all playing for real, okay. All right, you ready? You ready? Whoa, whoa, all right. All right, Simon says jump. Simon says squat. All right, now take a, take a seat real quick. Oh, got him! Oh, got him! Got you. Got you. Am I over? Am I done? Christian! Yeah, it's, it's every round we got to Okay. Your turn, go for somebody else. Come on, get somebody, get somebody. Simon says, sit down. Simon says, stand up. Simon says, sit down. <laughs> Simon says, stand up. Sit down. Ah! Oh! No, they, they never stood up. Hold on. <laughs> they, have, they never stood up. But hold on. I see you talk. Yep, right. You, yep. The tallest thing in the room. Yes, sir. The shaggy hair. We, what do you see yes, him do? Huh? He sat down. He, he said it wasn't me. He said it wasn't. Oh, Shaggy. Ah, uh, funny. Ha, 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 ha. It wasn't me. I got it. All right. We got to hype it. We got to. We, come on. Let's All go. Right. My turn. It's your turn. Y'all ready? Come on, y'all. Y'all ready? Come on, y'all. We here. Everybody's here. Simon says hands in the air. Wave them like you just don't care. Simon says hands down. Simon says ten hut. Say, say, Simon said, who? <laughs> say that, what, what Simon said? Simon said, stay at attention. <laughs> at ease. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, Javi. <laughs> we just talked about. All right, all right. Hey, so, right here, too. No, she put her hand no, out before I even said at ease. She out. All right, we got to refine this game and come back next week. Because I got to think of some things to get y'all down. Y'all all up. Everybody's all paying they attention. Focus. Yeah, he had y'all doing some military stuff at the end. We can turn the music up a little bit. Thank y'all so much, participants. Thank you for helping us out. Listen, we appreciate y'all for helping us out, too. Give yourselves a round of applause. I guess y'all don't care that much about yourself. I'm going to give y'all a round of applause. Hey, hey Victor, you, you. y'all ready for some worship, though? I can't hear you, Victory Youth. Everybody back on your feet. Simon says back on your feet. Victory Youth, y'all ready for worship? Y'all make some noise for the Victory Youth Band. Yo. I don't know about you, but I really feel like God is gonna do something different in this room tonight. There's been a whole lot of stuff going on that you guys are not aware about. But I believe that it's when things get chaotic, when things are crazy in our lives that the Holy Spirit shows up and does something that just blows our minds. Your mask is really dope, by the way. I like that, that's fresh. So listen, don't just allow us to be the only ones worshiping. 
We're not worshiping for you. We're worshiping with you. Amen? So let's tune our hearts. Let's just align with our Father. We just say, Jesus, we love you. We're expecting tonight. Heaven invade this place. Do what only you can do, God. We worship you in this place today. You have your way, God. In Jesus' name, let's go.
And I feel like we need to be reminded of that on a regular basis. Because the Bible does say that nothing will be impossible for those that believe. Think about, think about that for a second. Nothing. There's nothing excluded from that. So whatever you think is impossible, is possible with Christ. Doesn't matter what it is, it's possible. When you think about the God you serve and how he knit the fabric of the universe together with the sound of his voice, tell me what's possible. A God who can do that who knows all of our circumstances, all of our situations. A God who can put stars in the sky and knows all of them by name and numbers the hairs on your head and formed you, shaped you, molded you before you were even formed in your mother's womb. He had a relationship with you. He knows it all. And there's nothing he can't do. So when you catch it, I just want you to sing along, let it, let it worship over you, let it wash over you, let it be a reminder to you that when you find yourself in those valleys where it seems like it's, it's impossible to get to the mountaintop, nothing is impossible. If you're walking with God, nothing is impossible. That's good news. That's a good place to clap right there. Nothing is impossible. Don't ever forget that. Jesus, we love you once again, and we thank you for the power that you possess. And we're reminded today that that power is on our side. And not only is it on our side, but it lives in us. So come alive in this place, God. Come alive in this place and remind us nothing is impossible. Let's go. There is no shadow that has ever overcome your life. There is no rival that could ever stand against your might. You have been with us. Every battle you've already won. Oh, you've already won. Everything is 
despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. A wall of my fears, I will turn into praise. I'll shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. Oh, all of my fears I will turn yeah. I'll shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment. Anything is possible. It's all because of you, Jesus. You've already done it all. You've already done it all. You made a way when there was no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You made a way when there was no way. One thing he can do, show me mountains he can move, and I can't find one. No, there's not one, there's no mountain he can move. There's no mountain he can move, no waters he cannot part. Yeah, because he's God, because he's God. There's nothing he can't do. Yeah, there's nothing he can't do. Oh, we make a miracle work, a promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are we make a miracle work, a promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Say, we make a miracle work, a promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. If you believe that, raise it up and say, we make a miracle work. Talk this, my God. 
stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it yeah you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop I challenge you to do right now is don't let the song just be a song here in this moment. I know that you're faced with a whole lot. I know you are. I don't know what it is, but I know you're faced with a whole lot. And I say this all the time, but when you're faced with things, trials, tribulations, stuff happening in your family, internal struggles, self-doubt, addictions, all kinds of stuff, the counterfeit will present itself and tell you that it's better than the real solution, which is Jesus. And when you don't have a praise in your heart or you don't have a word that you can pull out of the book to speak to the mountain, you fall for it. And I'm telling you because I did it again and again and again. But I bet you that if you begin to start singing who God is in your life, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, chain breaker, whatever it is, I bet you the enemy will flee from you. That mountain will crumble into nothingness because God put a power on the inside of you himself so that when you speak to something, it's got to do what you say. Let's not forget that. I think that we forget like who we are in Christ. And so we, we play the back seat. We kind of take, you know, the back seat, like the, the little kid role. We know the creator of the heavens and the earth lives on the inside of you. So when you speak, when you open up your mouth and you start to speak to a mountain, I bet you it moves. Cause it's not more powerful than the God that lives in you. It's not, I don't care how big it looks. I don't care how impossible it seems, it's not bigger than the God that lives in you. It's not. And I'm passionate about that because I believed the lie for years. And I neglected the power that was on the inside of me. And I wasn't speaking to my mountains. I became a victim to my mountains. And I don't want that to be you. So we're gonna sing this chorus one more time and I just want you to think about whatever's in your way, whatever's trying to bully you into thinking that you're nothing, into making you think that you're worthless or you don't matter or your life has no purpose or you're not attractive or whatever it is, the enemy comes with all kinds of tricks and they're all the same. He don't come with nothing new. 
He always comes with the same thing because he knows how to pull you into his little grip. But the beautiful thing is that the Bible says that there's nothing that can take you out of the grip of his hand. So even though the enemy might be trying to get a grip on you, he's not going to win unless you let him. Because we have a choice in this. We have a choice to choose whether or not we're going to be a victim or a victor. And I believe that this room is full of victors tonight because Christ lives on the inside of all of you. And there's not a battle that he faced that he has lost. Not one. Not one. So take this into your secret place and into all your situations. We call him Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, Light. Say, my God, that is who you are. Sing it like you mean it. Waymaker, Miracle Worker. Light in the darkness, my God, that is. One more time, one more time, say. Waymaker, miracle worker. Yeah. So my God, that is who you are. Say, that is who you are. 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 Say, that is who. Yeah. That is who you are. That is who you are. Thank you, Jesus. I love that we just sing about who God is, that he's a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper, because the next song that we're singing is called Pieces. We're singing about the love that God has for us, that because of his love for us, he's a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper. And I love seeing how many of you guys are going in for Jesus tonight. But I know that there are people in this room that you just don't feel like worshiping tonight. I don't know what's going on in your life. Maybe you hear us sing this song about a God who's a way maker and you're like, I've, I've never seen this God, never felt this God. And I was watching um, a church service earlier this week and one of the worship leaders had a moment of vulnerability where she said, I did not want to be here. I did not want to be on this platform. I did not want to be here worshiping. It's one thing when you come into a service and you're ready to worship, you're expected to worship, you're excited for it, but it's one thing to worship when you don't want to. It's one thing to worship when you don't feel anything. Some of the most powerful moments in my life have been worshiping through the pain, worshiping through attitudes, worshiping through a situation, God shows up and he doesn't give his love to us in pieces because of mistakes that we made. He pours it all out for us, all out for us. You right now in this moment need to decide, are you going to worship through it and receive all of his love? Because he's here in this room and he wants to spend time with you. And so when we sing this song, I challenge you guys, listen to the words because it is truth. These words sing the love of God over every single one of you in this room. And it sings it over me. And I know it can be hard to believe sometimes, but that's where a step of faith comes. And so let's sing this song together with faith, knowing that our God is a God who doesn't give his love in pieces. We love you, Lord. It's just you and us tonight.
sing that again. Sometimes that's a little hard. But can I get the leaders, the prayer leaders, down to the front, please? Leaders.
believe that there's something specific that the Lord wants to heal in some people tonight. In the area of sexual molestation. This happened to you. You never told anybody. to you, you never said anything, you never told anybody, and you've been afraid, and you've been carrying it all by yourself, the first thing I need you to know is that that was not your fault, number one. The second thing is that even though it did happen, it doesn't mean that God wasn't there. He was there, and he saw everything, and tonight, he wants to heal that. I know this is a bold move to, to admit something like that and to step out of your seat, step out of, your, step out of an aisle and come down and pray with somebody. But I want to challenge you right now to not let that thing fester in your heart any longer, to not let that be something that the enemy holds over your head any longer because he wants to heal that. This is a safe space for you to do that. There's no judgment here. There's no judgment Every single person down here loves you. And I know it's hard. But don't let the moment pass and not get that healing. Step out. And don't let the enemy hold that over your head any longer. Whoever that is, make your way down here to pray with somebody. Be bold enough, as hard as it is. And if you're a friend of the, of the person and you know that that has happened, just whisper in their ear, maybe come down with them, whatever that looks like. But I felt that really strong. Trust him, he's a good, good father. He's a good, good father. You are loved by him.
Every step you take, those chains are falling. Every choice you make, those chains, those chains are falling. Every step you take, those chains, they're falling. Your 
touch the hem of your garment. I receive my healing gift, just like you promised. I stretch out my hands and touch the hem of your garment. the hem of your garment, oh Lord, I receive my healing gift, just like you You made the 
darkness tremble. You make the darkness tremble. You make the darkness tremble. You make the darkness tremble. You make the darkness tremble. You make the darkness tremble. Darkness tremble. You make the darkness tremble. You make the darkness tremble. Say, say, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble. You make the darkness tremble. Sing it again, say, you make the darkness tremble. Say, say, you make the darkness tremble. is definitely trembling right now. I believe that with every step that each one of you have taken to come down here in boldness and release that secret that the enemy has been trying to hold over your head, the lights were coming on in your life, in your future. Because the thing is, once you expose something that was once hidden in the darkness to the light, it can't stop you anymore it can't stop you anymore so I want to prepare some some next steps I'm gonna I'm not, I'm not sure who I need to talk to because I don't want to let the prayer you receive tonight be the be the only thing because walking out of something like that is a journey it's not something you just get prayer for and then all of a sudden it's you know what I mean the Lord is definitely a healer, but, but he walks with us through the journey. And so if you remember the person that you prayed with, I don't know how we're how we going to do this. Somebody help me in some kind of way. We'll figure it out. But I want you to be able to connect with somebody so that we can walk with you through this thing. We are all in this thing together as one family in Jesus Christ. So no, is there, there is a no man left behind policy, no, no woman left behind policy. We're going to walk through this with you so we can journey with you through that healing. You're so brave. You're so brave. You're so brave. I just want to keep saying you're brave because a lot of people wouldn't step out. And, and maybe there's some people that, that have not. And, and, and I don't want to, I'm not shaming you for not stepping out. That's not what this is about. Because I believe that as we were praying for these individuals down here, that it doesn't exempt you from the healing because you didn't come out. But if, you, if it happened to you and you haven't spoken it out and, and said anything to somebody, I challenge you to do that. That's the first step. That is the very first step. I'm so proud of all of you, like for real, for real, for real. And I know that hell is real upset right now. And I know that heaven is rejoicing right now because of the choices that you made. And so we're not going to let that hang over your head anymore. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for what, you're, what you did, what you're continuing to do in all of our lives, God. We thank you for the healing that is ever so present in this place. Your Holy Spirit that is ever so present in this place. And you're still going to continue to work on hearts and minds and change lives and begin to turn the lights on in all the dark places, all the dark rooms and areas that we have hidden in our hearts that the enemy tries to make us feel like in that darkness is superior to us. But you are the light of the world and you live on the inside of us. So there is no darkness. There is no darkness that can overtake us. We walk with you, Jesus. Every step we take, we're holding your hand. We're holding your hand, putting our feet in every little footprint we see you take so that we're following the path that you have for us, Lord. Thank you for the restoration that is happening now, for the healing that is happening now. We love you, God. 
You're so good to us. We worship you. We love you. We thank you for this opportunity that we get to worship you in Victory Youth Family. If you rock with that, we say in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. You know what time it is. Turn to somebody on your left and your right. Give them a high five. Air high five or however you want to do it. But just look at them and just say, what's up? And as you make your way to your seats, ask this question. If you could make one rule that everyone in the world had to follow, what rule would you make and why? That's a deep question. If you could make one rule that everybody in the world had to follow, what rule would you make? You got one? She got one? What is it? What is it? Follow Jesus. That's, that's, that's a rule. That's the golden rule right there. Follow Jesus. Anybody else got one? Give me one more. One more, one more. Nobody? Nothing? What? Nothing? Okay, anyway, we love you guys. God bless you. You're so worth it. Throw pulling <laughs> Jawal wrist combi pronouns and things in court. We take one dude booty quay Pinocchio. I don't even know how to say that normally. Pronouns and things in court. It's Katergaris Katergaris. I can take a turn. Double banana grains. Rompage. <laughs> Pronouns and things incorrectly. Miss Cuis? Yeah. Receipt What's in the max real? Booty. Hatsy and things incorrectly. Pronouns and things incorrectly. Ocasio? Cooper Cockies. You scenery. Record red. Q Tobble. Pronouns and things incorrectly. You debate. Stoom you pop. Jamil. Jugla. Facebook. Prada Hot Order. Heady Rogan P. Rogue City. Ebola. Levon to her genie era Pronouns and things incorrectly. How about EE on? Suckers. Rob to Motors. Jalapenos. Cheater Chav. Honey Newt Swaros. Prenna and thing and thing and thing. Prutin. Rice Cross Spice, y'all. Dr. Poo Poo. Doom Jobless. Oh, this little war. Poop tarts. It's a bunch of fruit white. Lamon Ace and Lee Mace. Nevada Orange Ace. Next to Rhymes. White Piat. And Watermelon. This is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. For the youth, I'm Carmen, here to give your announcements. First, y'all know the drill. Let's make some noise for our first time guest. Woo! If this is your first time here with us, thank you for coming out during these crazy times. We appreciate you coming out so much that we want to give you a gift. If you could just text new here 2021 to 203040, we will have a free Chick-fil-A gift card just for you. All right, I need you all to listen very closely. We have a very important announcement. On March 10th, we will have service online. That's right, we will not be in this building. So mark your calendar and make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel, Victory Youth North Cross. Let's practice our vocals. Victory Student Worship Audition. Register audition March 7th at worship.victoryatl.com under student application. So that wraps up our youth announcements. Pastor Javi is bringing the word tonight and kicking off our series on forgiveness called Bury the Hatchet. To stay up to date with us, follow us on Instagram at vy.northcross. For the youth, I'm Carmen. Come on, let's go. You alive in the building. Make some noise. Hey, real quick, I just want to follow up um, because, man, we were going in and worship today. I was about to say, hey, wrap it up. We might, we might as well. Uh, let's just keep on, you know, forget, forget the message, forget everything. I just want to follow up with what uh, 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 Pastor Jamal just said. Um, if we could just throw up that, um, that text to pray real quick. Um, it, it, we'll, we'll try and reach out, well, not try, we're going to reach out to you um, as soon as we put this uh, text to pray up. Um, if you came up during that, like, like Jamal said, it will be a detriment to us if we do not follow up. And, and just to even, um, you know, set you guys up for even more success, um, any leaders, if you prayed with a student, hey, just reach out to them, you know, or after service, get their number, get their information. But if you need prayer uh, or if you came up here for prayer, 
text to this um, so we can follow up with you. Because like Jamal said, that that's something that it's a journey, y'all. And we're, and we're about to get into all of that. But I, I, I didn't want to keep on continuing moving on. So um, if you came up here for prayer, you could you could screenshot that, you know, just in case you ain't got them quick fingers. You know, you could text to that right now. Um, and we would love uh, to follow up with you. Um, and even after service, y'all, we'll, we'll we'll make sure that we, we we take care of every single person who came up during that prayer and make sure we follow up and um, somebody reaches out to you in some sort of way. So uh, real quick, too, I want to remind you guys, just like uh, Carmen, didn't Carmen do such a great job, y'all, in the video announcements? She mentioned something that next week we are not going to be in the building. Everybody say, oh, yeah, it's going to be so sad. But listen, hey, it, it is not COVID, the beginning of COVID part two. It is not, uh, you know, 2020 all over again. The reason why is because we're getting a new HVAC system in like the whole building. And that's just a big word, if you don't know, for like the AC and heating unit, you know, everything that this cool air that you feel or whenever it's hot whenever it's too hot that's the whole system that's going on and they're gonna fix it so we can't be in the building during that time because uh you know something might fall on our head i don't really know why we can't but you know that's why they're, they're switching the whole hvac but we're gonna be online so if if you could please uh go um subscribe to our youtube channel victory youth norcross and uh go to youtube follow us on youtube follow us on on Instagram, um, vy.norcross. We're going to be keeping you guys posted on what's going on with that and how we're going to be having an online service during that time. And then don't worry, we're going to be right back into the building right after that. Yeah, so don't don't be afraid. Go, yeah, y'all can clap for that. That shows me that y'all are excited. So we got our leaning crew. Clap for our leaning crew real quick. And so real quick, somebody texted me the other... um a couple days ago, and they had some concerns, you know, they had like, you know, they had some complaints, and this person was like, hey, Javi, we got to get back to something, and I was like, uh-oh, you know, as a pastor, you get kind of worried about these, because it's like, uh-oh, somebody, somebody about to, you know, we got a complaint, but they told me, they were like, we haven't done two claps and a Ric Flair in a while, why haven't we done it? So if y'all know what I'm talking about, let me get two claps in a Ric Flair. Woo! Okay, and if you don't know what we're talking about, all you do is clap twice, and then you go, woo, just like you heard everybody do so on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Let me get two claps. Oh, I didn't, I didn't even, I, I got to say, I, I know, I messed up. All right, I'm going to do one, two, three. Give me two claps in a Ric Flair. Then you do it. Ready? One, two, three. Give me two claps in a, okay, no, I got to say, I ha I'm I I'm not gonna count. I'm not gonna count. All right, ready? Give me two claps in the Ric Flair. Hey, that's it. That's it. And so we're about to hop into this thing. Uh, Y'all saw the video. Y'all saw the epic video. We are in a series called Bury the Hatchet. You got kind of scared, didn't you? <laughs> We're in a series called Bury the Hatchet. And so you're probably like, what does that even mean? Well, that the meaning of that is that it's like it's a symbol of making peace. Native Americans, whenever they were at war with somebody um, and they wanted to make peace, they would literally bury their weapons and show that they didn't want to fight anymore. And isn't it so crazy that today in 2021, making peace seems so far-fetched. It seems so foreign and so outdated, kind of like that phrase. You know what I'm saying? Like, we literally have no peace, no chill, as you kids like to say. Do they say no chill anymore? I don't even know. That's I'm, I'm probably, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, we have no chill. We have no peace. In politics is madness. In our society is madness. On social media, there's madness. Nobody wants to have no. We even have this thing called cancel culture. Where literally, if somebody makes a mistake, it doesn't matter if it was yesterday or if it was 10 years ago, you might get canceled. Say it one more time, you might get. And so we have this thing in our culture. And so 
Uh, you know, it has a, a little, I'm going I'm to read the def- definition of cancel culture. I went on, um, you know, the most reliable source, Urban Dictionary. Um, cancel culture is a, a modern internet phenomenon where a person is ejected from influence or fame by questionable actions. It is caused by critical mass of people who are quick to judge and slow to question. It is commonly caused by an accusation, whether that accusation has merit or not. It is direct a uh, result of ignorance of people caused communication technologies outpacing the growth in available knowledge of a person. Cancel culture. And so, you know, okay, we let I partially understand cancel culture. Like I can't you know, there's a, a smidge of respect there because it is a way where we look at people of influence and we hold them accountable. But it's gotten way too out of hand. It's gotten way too crazy. And so us as people, we have to ask ourselves like, OK, like, you know, I, I respect that part of cancel culture. But then there's this other half of cancel culture where you have to think to yourself like, like, you know, us as Christians, we ask this question, you know, WWJD, you know what I'm saying, Rashad? Have you ever asked, like, what would Jesus do? And we have to ask ourselves, would Jesus be cool with cancel culture? And my response to that is I feel is no, because Jesus had every right to literally cancel Culture, literally cancel culture, generations, the world, humanity in itself. He had the right to do it. He was a perfect man. He was fully God. He was a perfect person. And and right before the cross, he could have said, cancel, 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 cancel. You're canceled. He's canceled. She's canceled. Everybody canceled. We're all canceled. Why? Because we are in a fallen world and we are born into this world with sin in our hearts because of what Adam and Eve, stinking Adam and Eve, did. And they, they they chose their own way, and us as humans have chose our own way apart from Jesus. We would have all been canceled by Jesus. But did he cancel us? No. He died on the cross, so that way he didn't have to cancel us, and we could be a part of his new culture, this counterculture culture. Oh, yeah, that's a counterculture culture. Yeah, we, we have to throw in a lot of culture. That culture, culture. It's the Jesus called cross, Jesus gang culture. I don't even know what I just said just now, but hopefully you're up. All right? And he wanted us to be a part of this new culture. And so I want to switch it up a bit. I want to start a revolution. Are you with me? Do you want a revolution? Whoop, whoop. Do you want a revolution? Whoop, whoop. We're going to go against cancel culture. We're going to go against this culture. We're going to go, we're going to do our own culture. And we're going to call it hashtag forgiveness culture. We're going to do this because this is what, this is what the disciples had this question to Jesus. They said, they said, Peter, I'm, I'm going to read it right now, but Peter's my guy, first of all. Peter's my guy. He's that dude. He, he'll ask any question. He really doesn't have no filter. This is where it says in Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 uh, through 35, or 21 through 22. Uh, it says, Peter says, then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many times as seven, like seven times. Can I forgive him like seven times? Like that seems like a good holy number. You know, seven is the number of holiness. That's how many days God made, you know, the earth like seven. That's, that seems like, you know, seven times. And then after that, you know, that I'm cutting them off. Like, uh, is that good, Jesus? And Jesus responds. He goes, Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but 77 times. Look, you might be thinking, oh, well, that's a, that's a, that's a pretty big number. Jesus isn't putting a, a, a number stamp on it. He's telling Peter pretty much, he said, 
No, don't just forget somebody once. Don't just forget somebody twice, three times, four times, uh, not even seven times. I want you be, to be in a continuous state of forgiveness. He was telling Peter, you need to always forgive. And you're like, hold on, what? Why, why, why? Like, all, all, that's a big word, always? All, always supposed to forget? Like, 77, hold on, let me count, you know, the, always? Like, like all that, we got to forgive all, all the time? And Jesus was like, yes, we have to forgive. We have to forgive others. So that's why we're starting. Who, who's ready to be a part of this forgiveness culture? All right, that wasn't everybody. But hopefully, by the end of the night, you will begin this journey of being a part of the hashtag forgiveness culture. Let's pray real quick. Let's pray as we jump into this. Jesus, we pray right now that every single person in here will soften their heart to what we have to say about forgiveness, God. That we would join in in this hashtag forgiveness culture. That we would join in to this, Lord. Because, God, you forgave us. That while we were still sinners, you forgave us for our sins. You died on the cross. So we may live in a life full of forgiveness. In a life fully free and full of peace. Lord, may we walk in this in Jesus' name, and everybody says, amen. Before we get this thing started, we, we got to do, you know, like in the beginning of TV shows, like warning, this is not for children. Like people are going to like stabbed and get died and a lot of foul land. Like we're going to set a little disclaimer real quick, okay? We're going to set a little disclaimer. And the disclaimer is we're going to start out by saying what? forgiveness is not because I feel like sometimes we can have this misconception you know what I'm saying Stephen that like you know oh you know oh um so uh what what really is forgiveness like where I'm gonna set a disclaimer and we're gonna let you know what forgiveness is not number one forgiveness is not denial forgiveness is not pretending it wasn't a big deal okay that's not what we're saying tonight. That's not what we're going to be pumping out to you guys tonight. Forgiveness is not just approving what happened to you as if it was okay, okay? We're not just going to approve. Forgiveness is not saying that that person, you know, for especially on this term of abuse in any form or fashion that you need to continue that relationship and continue entertaining that relationship. There needs to be some boundaries with people like that. that that is not what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is not saying that it's easy. We're not saying tonight that this is an easy thing. Trust me, every leader in here could attest to this who has been in the faith for a while. It is not an easy thing. We're, we're not saying that that's what Jesus approves of. And, and, and forgiveness is not a one and done. Okay? Forgiveness is not a one and done. Like you're just you're you're just gonna like magically like feel all better as soon as no, you're probably gonna have to forgive that person multiple times. And forgiveness is not forgetting. That is one of the stupidest quotes ever. You know, forgive and forget. Huh. No. Okay. You can that is physically impossible to forget what somebody has wronged you in. Okay. So I'm going to just set that aside. That's the disclaimers for tonight. We all got that? Are we all good? We got the disclaimers? We got the disclaimers? Okay, that, the forgiveness is not that. But we do need to forgive. We do need to forgive. No matter how big, no matter how small, we need to forgive. So we're going to walk through that today. We're going to walk. How do we forgive? First and foremost, point number one is we have to feel before we forgive. We have to feel before we forgive. You know, my, my, my lovely wife is here, Paula. We've been married a, a whole, yeah, y'all can clap for her. She's so amazing. And so we've been married like a whole year. 
okay? You know, a year and a couple months, okay? Uh, it's been a year and a month. I, look, I got that on point. It's been a year and a while. We got married uh, year of 2020, uh, February 15th, right before Rona popped off and went crazy. And so, uh, thank God, we, we got married right before that because, you know, we paid for the venue and everything. That would have been bad. I heard some crazy stuff. But I, I've, been, I've been married for a whole year, you know, and I'm learning very quickly um, this whole thing about forgiveness. Uh, yeah, you do it a lot in marriage, like a lot. Like you forgive a lot. And especially Paula has to forgive me a lot because, um, you know, she could probably attest to this, that, you know, that emoji that's like this. Yeah, Paul is in a constant state like that with me. It's just face palm emoji all the time because, you know, I make a lot of mistakes, you know, and, uh, you know, um, and so she she has to be in a constant state of forgiving me. And so whenever me and, and my wife, you know, get in a situation, a educated, passionate conversation or, you know, whenever, you know, we're, you know, um, you know, whenever it's a moment where she's like, he doesn't get it. Um, we do this thing where we say, hey, can you validate my feelings? And validate is just saying, you know, can you affirm that what I'm feeling is very real? And so I have to, in that moment when she says that, I have to listen. And I have to validate what what she's feeling is very real. And it's a very real thing. And then a lot of times we end that conversation where I apologize, but I'm not just like, I'm sorry, you know, uh, you know. But I say, I'm sorry, and I add this sentence to it. I was wrong for doing that. I was wrong. No matter, hey, no matter how much I feel like, I don't really get it. Like, I really didn't do nothing. I just forgot to close the toothpaste, but I'm sorry I was wrong for doing that. I was wrong for doing that. And let me just be real. People are not going to do that to you, okay? You know, uh, you know uh, a lot of times people are not going to even probably even say the word sorry to you. But you yourself sometimes have to say to yourself, hey, what I'm feeling, it hurts. That stung a little bit. You know, just like we said, for, in the forgiveness is not. We're, uh, I'm going to be referencing this forgiveness is not. Hey, we're not just going to glance by this. We're not just, you know, uh, they ain't hurt me. You know what I'm saying? They ain't hurt me. I'm good. I'm good. You know, I'm not talking to them ever again, but you, they ain't hurt me, though. You know, uh, I'm blocking them on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Snapchat, all of them. But, I'm, you know, I'm good. They ain't hurt me. You know, they ain't hurt me. They, you, you were hurt. You were hurt. You were hurt. Just be real. You were hurt. And not, <laughs> I, I, I wasn't hurt. Yeah, yeah. Just, just deny. I wasn't hurt. But you were hurt. You were hurt. It did hurt. It did hurt. And let me just back it up with saying what they did to you was wrong. That was wrong. That is not okay. It is not okay. What they did to you was wrong. And before we forgive, we have to sit in that moment saying, I'm hurt. But I'm not just hurt. What they did to me was very real and it was wrong. Let me tell you something. God cannot heal you unless you're willing to reveal to him and reveal to yourself hey, that hurt. God cannot heal if you don't reveal. If you don't reveal that thing to yourself, if you don't reveal that thing to God, then God cannot heal you from that. Because the more you live in this denial, like we said, and the forgiveness is not, the more you start pushing yourself and internalizing that. And you have to be honest with yourself. That hurt. That hurt me. 
You might need to be honest with that person. Yo, you hurt me. And then we could go to the forgiveness part. But we also have to understand, like I said, we live in this culture where it's cancel culture. Like, you know, like they're canceling people left and right. But we also do that, too, you know, and we have to look. Okay, we have to look. We have to separate our mind from cancel culture versus forgiveness culture. What what is cancel culture? But how do we switch over to forgiveness culture? And let me tell you this right now. This is what this is what cancel culture does. It says you wrong me. And I'm going to cut you off. You do me dirty. And I'm going to cut you off. You say something crazy to me. And I'm going to cut you off. And we just cut. Cut. We're, we cut everybody off. I'm going to cut you off, my parents. I'm going to cut them off. I'm going to cut my friend off. This person bullies me on Instagram. I'm going to cut them off. And we, what's wrong? What, what's, I'm, oh, I, y'all feeling a little unsafe? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. All right. They, they feeling. <laughs> we're, t- we're too close for this. Don't tell your parents. No, your parents are watching us. In the, sorry. Warning. This is, this, we're good. I have a good grip on this. But y'all, y'all are tripping right now, but this is what we do. It might not be a weapon, but in the spiritual realm, we have this. And we begin to cut people off until we cut so much. And we say, no, I'm getting, I'm getting my revenge. I'm getting paid. I don't need y'all. I don't need y'all in my life. I don't need you. I'm going to cut you off. I could do this on my own. I don't need nobody. I don't need nobody. But then we don't only do that. Oh, 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 I'm, I'm going to cut you good. You're, you're going to get this payback. You're going to get this. I'm not just cutting you off, but, oh, I'm going to get you. I might say something crazy. I might sub, you know, uh, in Snapchat. In, that You could sub anybody in any sort of stuff. Sub Facebook, sub anything. I'm going to sub everything you. But let's do this thing. Let's do this thing. What, what, I, I love to call this, let's play it forward. Let's play it forward. When we, when we begin to cut people off, when we begin to get our own revenge, when we begin to, you know, you know uh, uh, do things in our own will and put things in our own hands and do things our own way, let's play it forward. What, what begins to happen during that? What, we, what begins to happen during that, that moment? Well, this is what, I, I love this quote. There's this quote that says that unforgiveness is like a poison that you drink and expect the other person to die. A lot of times we swing this thing at people. And we throw this thing at people and we take it in our own hands. But we don't realize that sometimes when we swing this, it might bounce right back. Not might. It does bounce right back when it comes to unforgiveness. And we end up hurting ourselves. We end up getting hit ourselves. We end up being a bystander in the process. And and we just start to cut into our heart and cut into ourselves. When you cut people off, you might get cut, or you do get cut. You get cut in the process. You're hurting yourself. We begin to, you know, we begin to make this concoction. Oh, I'm going gonna, ooh, I'm gonna to get him good. Oh, that boy is going to just, you know, leave me for his little side thing, you know, or, you know, this girl thinks she's too cute because she's on Instagram, you know, and we, this is a scorpion stinger, okay, and we begin to make this thing, and, you know, we begin to, oh, I'm going to get him good, I'm going to get him good, 
Yup, I'm gonna get them good, and we begin to stir this thing up, and then, and then, and then, but and and we think, oh, I'm about to serve this thing up nice to them. I'm about to serve this thing up nice, and, and, and in reality, we just. I didn't put hand sanitizer in it. Just... <laughs> I did put the hot sauce, but it's at the bottom. I didn't really stir it. Ooh, that's a little tingling in my throat. Okay. Ooh. No, I'm joking. But we hurt ourselves. We hurt ourselves. We cancel ourselves in the process of canceling others. We hurt them. And we hurt us. And then on top of that, we start swinging. We don't even know who we swinging this thing on. Just like she was saying, hold on, we too close. You, man, that's a message in itself. You begin to, you start swinging and everybody, you start hitting the people closest to you. They ain't even doing nothing. Hold on, why are you swinging at me? I didn't even do nothing. You just start, oh no, nobody going. And then you, next thing you know, you cut people off. But we need to move into this forgiveness culture. What is forgiveness culture? Forgiveness culture is we heal. We heal. Yeah, we, we, we got cut. We got cut. We got cut bad. But we can't just act like, oh, no, I'm not, I'm not going to let, you know, like, you, I, I wish this was one of those hats. You know, when you see people in the movies, they got that, like, accent. We walk around like, oh, I can't let nobody see this. We try and walk around life. We got this thing, and we're hurt bad. Like, we need a doctor. We need to heal. Forgiveness culture heals. Forgiveness culture is healing. Forgiveness culture is saying, hey, I understand that no man is perfect but Jesus. And every single person will fail me, even the people closest to me. Every single person will disappoint me at some point. Every single person, I might feel rejection from them. Every single person, I might feel like, man, they didn't come through. They lied to me. Every single person might do this in your life. No man, no woman is perfect but Jesus. He's the only one that, that is, he's, he always follows through. He's always there for us. And forgiveness culture says, I put it in God's hands. So let's play, let's play it forward when we forgive. We saw what happens when, when we don't forgive. You know, I drank that. You want, yeah, I'll drink it again. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm not. You, you won't. <laughs> don't do that to me. <laughs> I'm there. Hey, and listen. You won't. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. I hate spicy stuff. But Listen. When we heal, you might have the scar. You might have the scar still, but you don't have to keep on walking around with that ax in your head. You don't have to keep on walking around with that ax in your heart. You don't have to keep on walking around with an open wound bleeding out. Jesus can heal you. When we enter into forgiveness culture, we enter into peace that surpasses all understanding because all the wrongs that have been done to us, we give all our anxieties. We cast it all on God. This is why Jesus died for us because by his stripes, we are healed. By his stripes, we are healed. And God is able to do a work in us. We become a part of that hashtag forgiveness culture. So what do we do now? We validate that what we're feeling is real. We say, you know what? I'm going to take the ax out of my heart. I'm going to let Jesus heal me up, you know, stitch me up, bandage me up. I, I, I throw the poison away. I throw it away. I give it to God. I say, God, take it from me. I can't do this on my own. So what do we do now? We go in love. You're like, what? They're like, what? We go and do what? We go in love. We go and love others. Let me tell you about this, this man. This man in, in the Bible named Joseph. 
Listen, Joseph, if, if, if anybody had to forgive a lot, it was him. I'm going to cut his, his story really quick, but y'all need to go into Genesis and check it out and, and, and read up a, a, a little bit on it. Listen, Joseph, this dude had a dream that everybody was going to bow down to him, including his whole family. He told his family. His family got jealous. So what did they do? You know what brothers always do. They throw you in a hole. What? They threw him in a hole. And then on top of that, they felt kind of bad. And they were like, should we kill him? And they were like, nah, we shouldn't kill him. Let's just sell him into slavery. So then they sell him into slavery. And then he goes into Egypt. And he's like, all right, I'm in Egypt. I don't know nobody. I guess I just need to go work and grind. And so he ended up working himself so hard that he ended up uh, working for the king. And he's working for the king. But then uh, the king's wife was a thirst trap. And then the king's wife was like, you know what? I want some of this. So she tried to snatch it up one day grabbed his coat, ripped his coat off, and he ran off and then tried to blame it on him and say, oh, no, he was trying to come at me and trying to do something to me. And so you know what the king did? He did what any king would do that some man just randomly tried to, you know, sleep with his wife. You know, he threw him in prison. So now Joseph was thrown in a hole, was uh, thrown into slavery, and now he's thrown into prison. He was thrown into prison for almost like years and years, like 40 years, I think it was. And he's out there just struggling. People forgot about him. It was was crazy. But then finally God gave him a mission was to interpret the king's dream. He interprets his dream. And then you know what ends up happening after that? He ends up getting elevated again. This guy gets so elevated that literally he had all the bling bling. He had all the ching ching. He had all of it. He was running things in Egypt. He's like one of the most high ranking people. And guess what happens, y'all? Guess who shows up on the scene? He's living life to the greatest. And his brothers show up on the scene asking him for some food because there's a famine in the land and they're going hungry. What? So they show up. They don't even recognize him, but he recognizes them. This dude didn't know what to do with his life. He wanted to get payback. He, he wished he had an ax to throw at them. He wanted to get revenge. And he kind of, in a way, kind of did. But then finally, he knew what he had to do. He had to be a part of that hashtag forgiveness culture. And so he finally reveals himself to his brothers. His brothers are freaking out. Oh, man, we done thrown him into a hole. We done thrown him into slavery. He, we're done. We're done. Game over. Not only can't we not eat, now we're about to be dead. We're done. We're done. It's game over. We're canceled. We're canceled. But then... Joseph, with tears in his eyes, knowing that he could get the revenge, he could take things into his own hands, he could make this happen at a snap of his fingers. He says this phrase in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, as for you, you meant it, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. He validates his feelings. He said, y'all did some crazy stuff to me. Y'all played me to the highest maximum. Played. But you know what? God had a purpose for this. God had a purpose for this. God had a purpose for me, and God brought me through it. He brought me out of it. He gave me my testimony. But not only that, I'm doing it for the lives of many. I'm doing it for the many lives that are out here hungry, for the many lives that are going to read this, for the many like I'm doing it for them. I'm doing it for all the people. I did this for all the people. Let me tell you something. Hurt people hurt people. I said that earlier. You remember that? But healed people help heal people. Healed people help heal people, y'all. So we need y'all, once you enter into this forgiveness culture, you need to start, this thing, this thing needs to start turning it. This thing turns into a, man, I wish I had one. I should have thought of that. That was a good one. You need a first aid kit now. 
you need a first aid kit. This turns into a first aid kit because you need to go out healing people, loving on people, taking care of people. And like I said, you, you might still bear the scars. Don't, don't be afraid of the scars. Those scars are your testimony. So you can say, hey, look, you see this? You see this scar right here? Yeah, Jesus healed that scar. And he can heal yours. He can heal your wounds. So you can look and say, yeah, yeah, you see this one too? Yeah, Jesus healed that one. And he can heal yours. He can heal your scars. But the crazy part is Jesus did that. He died on a cross for us. And he rose again from the dead. And what did Jesus do? He kept his scars. Because he had to prove that he kept the scars in his hand. He said, he said, look, look to his disciples. He said, look, it's me. You saw me on the cross. It's me, right? This, this, look, he showed the, the wounds in his side where he got stabbed. Look, it's me. I'm going to be up with the Father. Jesus kept his scars, so should we, to show others, to love on others, to show love to others, and to help heal others. That's forgiveness culture. Can I show my scars real quick? Can I show my scars to you? I don't know if y'all know my testimony, but at a young age, my, my mother was uh, addicted to drugs. She was addicted. She was, she was so addicted where she would lie to me. She would leave me alone with strangers. It, it would get so bad where, you know, I wouldn't even know where she was at sometimes. She would tell me she would get better. So then this, it started welling up in me. Anger, anger turning into unforgiveness, unforgiveness turning into bitterness, bitterness turning into resentment. I began to not like my mom. All this unforgiveness in me until one day at 11 years old, my mother passed away from a drug overdose. And I thought to myself, man. I wasn't able to forgive her for the things that she did. I began to realize she's human. Parents are just kids who have kids. She's human. She went through her own stuff. She went through her, her own wounds. She went through her own unforgiveness. And that's why she was in this situation. Man, I wish I could have told her face to face, I forgive you. And that. It doesn't just end there. There was moments where I would just hold grudges towards people, or I just hold these grudges towards so many people. And man, you could start, you could start coming out if y'all can hear me. I will hold these grudges towards people, and I would get so angry with people, and I would be like, "Man, I don't need you. I don't need nobody." But I, I had to join the forgiveness culture. And just like y'all saying earlier, I let the love of God pour over me. And as God continued loving me, and as God continued showing me love, and as I began to understand the, 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 the majesty in the gospel and how Jesus came to forgive me of my I began to let that wash over me and, and began to fall more deeper in love with God. I began to fall more into this forgiveness culture. And God began to do so much within me. And look, tonight's your chance. Tonight's your chance to join the forgiveness culture. I don't know what they did to you. I'm sorry they did that to you. I'm sorry that they hurt you. But look, God can make a way out. God can make a way. If you allow him tonight, he could do a work within you. He could do a work within you. He could do such an amazing work within you. And you might not feel it all the times. And you might not see it all the time. 
But if you let yourself be open to what God wants to do in your life, he will begin to do such an amazing work within you. He would do so many amazing things. And you might be saying, Javi, but you don't know what they did to me. You're right, I don't. I don't know, but I'm sorry. And me and Jesus love you too much for you to stay in that. For you to stay stuck in that. God will make a way. And if the whole band could just come out right now, the whole band just come out. I need everybody to stand up at this moment. Because as we jump into this series and we're about to talk about some amazing things. We're about to talk about some real stuff in this series. Some of, some of y'all, the forgiveness goes deeper. Maybe, maybe there's some things you, you've been struggling with God with. Maybe you've been struggling to forgive yourself. We're going to talk about it. But tonight, we need to release. We need to release our grip on the hatchet. We need to release this thing. We need to drop it. We need to let it go. Because y'all been swinging for so long, you've been hurting others. Y'all been swinging for so long, you've been hurting yourself. Y'all been swinging for so long, you've been sipping on poison for so long, and it's time to let it go. Crazy thing is, is that not, not only does forgiveness hurt you emotionally, scientifically, it could hurt you physically. It could mess up your immune system. It could, it could uh, uh, start putting things like cancer into your body. Look it up. It's real. Stop hurting yourself. It's time for you to live in freedom. Stop letting those people hold you back from living a life of peace. Stop letting those, those people hold you back. Stop letting them hold you back. It's time to let God have his way within you. It's time to let God, to say to God, you know what? I want, I want you to do a work in me. And we're about to go into this song of worship. And Lena Crew, y'all free, free to walk off the stage. We're about to go into this song, but let me tell you something. It doesn't matter how far gone you are in unforgiveness. God can make a way. God can make a way. We're about to go into this song of worship. We're about to start singing this song, and I want y'all to sing this song with everything that you got. That God is a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He can heal every single part of you. Some of y'all might not even know where you need healing in. Ask God, what do I need healing in? Start asking him tonight. God, where can you heal me? We're about to sing this song, and I need y'all to sing it with everything you got. With everything that you got. That God, you're a way maker. You're a miracle worker. And I might not see it right now. I might not feel it right now. I know it's a journey, God, but I need to start this journey. I need, a, I need you to walk with me, God. And I might get tired sometimes, but can you help me through it? Can you help me through it? God, you are a way maker. Come on, let's start singing it right now. Let's start singing it. Wait. Come on. Lift your voice up. He's not going to let you go. It might be scary to you, but God is going to make a way. It might not feel comfortable.
never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. You never stop working. You never stop working. You never stop working. You never stop working. You never stop. Come on. Come on. Sing it out. Sing it out. Even when he never stops working. Let him move in your heart right now. You never stop. You never stop, Lord. Come on. That is who you are. He loves you. He loves you so much. And he loves you so much. He doesn't want you to live a life of unforgiveness, offended at everybody that hurts you, offended at every situation that happens to you. He wants you to live free. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. So listen, I want us to pray a prayer tonight all together. And I'm going to leave a blank. I'm going to leave two blanks within this prayer. And I'm going to need you to fill in the blank. First is a name. And the second is what they did to you. First is a name. And the second is what they did to you. And then we're going to ask God to help us on the journey of forgiving them. So everybody repeat after me, say, I forgive, now say the name, say the name, you, you can say it, you can say it to yourself, you can whisper, it to, who's that, what's that name, we're going to pause here for a second, I forgive, and what's that name, now we're going to switch to that, so I forgive, for fill in the blank fill in the blank what did they do to you what did they do now now repeat after me and I ask you God to help me in my journey of forgiving them. All right, who else? Let's repeat it one more time. Let's repeat it. Look, and and, and maybe 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 I need to think about this too. I'm over here having y'all doing it, but who do I need to forgive? Who do I need to forgive? So let's say it all together. I forgive. Doreen, that's my mother. For the mistakes she made as a mother. And now repeat this after me. And I ask you, God, to help me in my journey of forgiving them. Now, I want y'all to remember this right here. Maybe take a picture of it. Maybe, you know, I mean, if you can remember, maybe write it down. 
Because let me tell you something. Like we said, it's not a one and done. You might have to go alone right uh, tonight, you know, and, and, and pray this prayer. You know, you, you might, you, t- next week, somebody's going to do you wrong. And you might have to pray this prayer. Because we're in a constant journey of forgiveness. We're in a constant journey of forgiveness. So let me pray over you right now. Close your eyes and bow your heads. And I can't pass this by. If there's anybody in here, you're saying, Javi, I have never even dedicated my life to Jesus. I have never even, you know, you're talking about forgiveness culture. I still need to, you know, start going after the Jesus culture. Like, if you're in here and you're saying, I do not have a relationship with Jesus. I have never, never said to myself that I am a follower of Jesus. I have never made a commitment to be a follower of Jesus. If you're in here, On the count of three, I need you to raise your hand. Nobody looking. Everybody bow your heads. One, two, three. Raise your hand right now if you're saying, I've never made a commitment to Jesus. I've never committed my life to Jesus. I see your hand. I see your hand. So I I need you to repeat after me. Everybody in here repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I want to grow in a relationship with you. So I believe in my heart. I try my best to believe in my heart that you are Lord of my life. And I want to start a journey of getting to know you more. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. All right, and let me pray over you real quick. Lord, I pray for every single person in this room as they've forgiven people, Lord. We have people who, you know, they, they've torn the band-aid. They've covered up these wounds for so long. And, and Jesus, I pray that we will help guide them in this journey uh, of healing and of this journey of forgiving, Lord. I pray that they, they, will not, they will not grow weary, that they will not get tired, God, that you will be their strength in the midst of this, Lord. And they will continue pursuing you in such a real way, God. They will continue growing closer to you, God. And Lord, they will live in true freedom, in true peace, in a world that's so chaotic and is full of unrest and is full of no peace. God, will you bring peace in the storm in Jesus' name? Peace in the storm, Lord. And as they go, Lord, I pray that you will cover them, that you will bless them, that you will shine your face upon them in Jesus' name. And they will be blessed in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen and amen. So we're, we're about to dismiss. But just a reminder, we're not going to be in the building next week. Catch us on YouTube. We're going to be doing some giveaways. We're going to be having some fun. We're going to have a good word next week. It's going to be really awesome, y'all. Don't miss it just because it's on YouTube. But then we're going to show up right back in the building after, after that. And, and, and we're going to be right back in the building. So on the 10th, next week, we're not going to be in the service. But then that following Wednesday, we're going to be back in the building. You guys are officially dismissed. We love y'all. We bless y'all. Remember to forgive. Remember to love. That you might have to forgive somebody in this room. Y'all have a great night.